Welcome to Nation in Conversation. I'm Theo Foster. With me today is Francois Strijdom from Senwes. Francois, if I look at the South African maize farmer, we have prices that are, if you, depending how you measure them, the maize price is almost half of what it was a year ago. Um, we have areas where the, farm, where, where the harvest is not that great. And now we have this whole issue about land expropriation without compensation. Let's start off as a big business playing in the agriculture sector with more than 5,000 odd farmers as your clients. How do you approach it? What, what's your view? Thank you. So let's uh, make, just first make a distinction between the sort of the immediate price cyclicality uh, which is, uh, I think, a short-term thing. It's a cyclical thing. Um, we're in soft commodities, and soft commodity prices has always done this over the last 100, 150 years. There's ups and downs, and it's depending on, on supply and demand. So just as we were at a very high price three years ago, now we're at a low price. We're at a very high uh, supply internationally. Uh, but. Of course, we've already seen the, the top of it and, and slowly uh, you know, coming down, um, you know, something to take, to take uh, notice of. So that's one issue. Those are short-term and cyclical price issues. Drought, similarly, is a, it's an event. Uh, yes, noticeably with a, an effect that runs out over two or three years, but also a time-limited event. Um, I think the, the other factor, um, land, uh, let's call it land uh, redistribution and the whole issue about that and, 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 and only that phrase coined, you know, expropriation without compensation. I think, you know, with the words that, that we use and, and, and used by uh, general media, we emphasize a certain um, aspect of it. I think the issue is we have this dualism in our economy because of the history and it's 150, 200 years of history. Uh, there, there was a specific, a specific set of uh, rules and uh, legal um, atmosphere and, and regulations that severely disadvantaged a big part of our population. And because of that, historically, what we see now is, is this huge disparity. So we have to address that. Not only disparity in income, actually a bigger disparity in wealth. Absolutely. Absolutely. Wealth that never vested. Absolutely. So um, I think what uh, our new president has done is set a process into action, uh, which he disciplines, uh, which he structures. Uh, and th there's a time, uh, you know, allocated to, to it in a very definite legal and, and process structure to it. And I can see, you know, since that first announcement at the uh, December 27 uh, Congress. 2017. So 2017 right? Congress. Uh, that sort of panic that was immediately and then the rationality setting in as the process uh, progressed. There's a, there's a lot of... Um, uh, you know, sort of centered attention and structure and um, meaningful debate that comes out of it. Um, and of course time is important this because um, you get your own opinion is informed by others opinions. So you have a view on a certain aspect at a certain point in time but if you listen to the debate more and more people are sort of moving to the center and moving forward in, in, in an orderly fashion. My take, and I agree with you, we're almost finding the fringes, not even moving to the center, but falling out of the debate, not forming part of this constructive long-term debate. And, and I, I get the impression that there's also a lot more going on that we're not aware of. Now, let's get back to the, the, the business of, part of your business is funding. You're a funder to the agriculture sector. So obviously, the land prices and the stability of the land prices is important. 
Um, at this point in time, are you looking at changing any of those policies? So I think we've we've always, as a company, decided to to not look at market value, but to look at productive value. So that's the first thing. So we don't need to change that. And I think if you were in that space and you were lending at the back and on the back of, of uh, market value, you, you are in trouble. But that's, that's only, the, the, we're also in trouble in certain areas simply because the prices was too high. Definitely. That's and the, we're seeing that, that froth coming out. That's definitely the second aspect. Uh, aspect. This is a, a, a limited um, uh, s supply, the resources, land and good quality land. And of course, the, 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 at the high point of this, the market value were twice that of the productive value. And, and that was notably also too high. So there's a normalization of that. Um, and an interesting thing that we now see, um, the first movers are, are coming to market. So what I see in, 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 in my client base, and especially in my financing book, is that the smaller to medium-sized transactions are still hesitant. But the bigger sort of first advantage movers are, are getting back into the race. I picked this up from uh, our bigger financial institutions as well. The deal flow is starting to, sort of from the middle of, of January, the deal flow is starting to move. So not only in your former book, but in the broader corporate South Africa, the, there is first movers starting to transact. I think the, the, the one thing, you know, we, we get scared when we use the, the, the term risk. But you must remember, on the other side, on the flip side of risk is opportunity. So, so risk and opportunity is associated directly. And that's where smart money goes. They look at industries, they look at regions, they look at specific entities and, and business opportunities from that point of view. Um, so if there is risk, and whether the risk is in the, the structuring of your balance sheet or a structural risk within the, the, the specific business unit that, that you're looking at, the first movers look through it and look at the future and then move. I'm going to ask you now a bit of a technical question on that point. There is, I think we can agree without risk there's no return. It's just a matter of what the risk return ratio is, but without risk there's no return. If you make that statement, is there therefore smart money that believes the risk now is less than it was six months ago? Sometimes the press don't tell you that. Would smart money be saying that? So I, I think the issue with that is if there's an elephant in the room and you don't address it, you, you think that by not addressing it, it will go away. It's a bigger problem than identifying the elephant and tackling it. With the rational process? With the rational process and exactly what, what you were saying now. So now the issue is there let's talk about it let's you know address it now and fall and and uh, our president has said it it's not going to go away we must tackle it now and we must fix it and get a, a rational process to it i'm going to ask you one last question francois will there be a number where the land issue is not debated yeah, if I think back over time, it's always been an issue. You know, those big, big factors will always. But I think the, the focus does shift. shift. Uh, the, the attention shifts. There will always be an issue. Every year there will be a new issue, you know, whether it's uh, food safety, whether it's food security, whether it's affordability or a bigger issue than land. Land is an emotional and it is within the South African context because of the history it is a big issue so I think for quite a lengthy period it will be an issue but it will as every other aspect will get through it and there will be other more important issues I get the impression that as time goes on the temperature of the debate is definitely more rational Francois thank you very much thank you very much dear from me Theo Foster at Nation in Conversation have a lovely day.